this is about SCORE Cleveland. What is SCORE? SCORE is the largest network of free volunteer small business mentors in the nation. And no matter what stage your business is in at SCORE, we have a mentor for you. And you can easily request a mentor to help start, grow, or transition your business today in this presentation, this brief presentation. I will show you two ways uh, that you can request a SCORE mentor. One is through our website, which I'll show you. And the other is I'm going to put up uh, some QR codes in uh, just about a minute. So if you have your cell phone free and you want to snap them, uh, give you an automatic link. Uh, our mission, vision, and values, uh, SCORE's mission is to foster vibrant small business communities through mentoring and education. Uh, we aim to give every person the support they need to thrive as a small business owner. Small business drives our national economy through business formation, job creation, and wealth building. Small businesses are critical to vibrant communities in our society. SCORE volunteers give freely of their time, energy, and knowledge to others. You will never be charged a fee for working with a SCORE mentor. Uh, we uh, power all entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs uh, to succeed. No one is turned away. In 2022, uh, for which we have the most recent data, 2023 data will be available shortly. Uh, we uh, were named the chapter of the year uh, for SCORE nationally, over 200 chapters. Uh, we start helped 501 businesses get started. Uh, over 800 jobs and over 7,500 people received mentor uh, services. We service the seven county, Northern Ohio region, uh, Cuyahoga, Lake, Lorraine, Geauga, Ashtabula, Huron, and Erie counties. Our services are free. We receive partial funding for our operation uh, from the U.S. Small Business Administration. There are over 10,000 SCORE volunteers nationwide, and every one of them is a volunteer. Uh, this is our website, uh, SCORE Cleveland. Uh, when you uh, search for the website, if you forget this exact uh, uh, sign, be sure you say SCORE Mentor Cleveland. If you just say SCORE Cleveland, you're going to get baseball statistics. While we all love our homegrown baseball team and uh, basketball and hockey teams, uh, SCORE is not involved with them, and so you have to say SCORE Mentor. Uh, and uh, you can also find a SCORE uh, mentor uh, on our website. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, over on the left, you can see there's this Find a Mentor. Just click on that, and a dialog box will come up. Uh, these are the QR codes that I mentioned. I'm going to leave them up uh, for about 30 seconds here um, so that uh, if you want to snap them, uh, the one on the left will take you to the home page uh, for your mobile device. And of course, uh, you can save that uh, uh, web link and then uh, send it to your desktop or any other device that you might wish to use. And then the uh, uh, QR code on the right uh, will take you to the request a mentor uh, part of the website. Uh, and so you can go from there. And again, if you can get both of these on the website. So that is it. And uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to go on mute and turn it over to Lindsay. Hello, hello, everyone. Always good to see everyone. Um, we have the presentation is being recorded for everybody who missed that at the very beginning because a couple of you came in afterwards. And we also are live on YouTube. So hello, hello to anyone who is watching live on YouTube. Um, I try to keep everything that like chat and everything and stuff like that going um, for everyone who is here. If you guys have been with me before, you will know exactly what I'm about to say. But for those of you who have not been here with me before, you might wonder. Uh, so what I want you to do actually is open up the chat and I want you to tell me who you are, where you are and what your business is. So. Today's workshop, I want to use your businesses as examples. Like I am a huge fan of us jumping into the internet and actually like going directly into answering questions and things like that. So the more about you and your business that I know, the better. And plus, I just love a good shout out to a location because I'm a I'm an all over the United States human. So I've been all over and I, I love sharing your guys' locations and knowing where you came from and all that jazz. So 
Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's great. Just let me know who you are, where you're from, and we can jump right in. And I will be looking at the chat the entire time. So if you've been here before, you know, again, that I am all about the chat. So if you share information in the chat, if you ask questions in the chat, if you do anything in the chat, I got you the whole time. Uh, it's a little bit easier for me to look at the chat than it is for me to look at the Q&A. So if you have a private question, I'm using air quotes there, go ahead and put that in um, for hosts and panelists only, and then we'll see it, but everybody else won't see it. But even still, I really believe in like everybody learning from everybody else. So even if you are Anne and you have an image consulting business, and then Jeff, who has a website startup business, we all learn from each other. So it's not like you can't learn from someone who has a business that's very different from yours. So don't assume that your question is something that's like so specific that no one else is going to understand what your what your question question is and all that good stuff. So that's it. I love it. People were in Indiana and we got Detroit in the house and we got Michigan, other places in Michigan. I know I saw um, y'all are from all over. We got Southern Ohio, Northern Kentucky representing, got Cincinnati. Someone specifically said Cincinnati. I think they were saying they from Cincinnati for real. Uh, so <laughs> go ahead and tell me everything that you guys want to tell me about yourselves and your business. And then we'll get started. Someone did ask, if I was like, am I a Google coach? Am I a Google trainer? What's my situation? Well, here's me. This is Lindsay. I am Lindsay. I'm the person that you see on the screen. I am the Ohio Grow with Google digital coach, but I am your personal Grow with Google digital coach, whoever you are and wherever you are in the country. Uh, I love all the Go Hoosiers. Y'all are hilarious. Uh, so if you were in Indiana, I am your Grow with Google digital coach today. Iowa, I am from, I'm your Girls Google Digital Coach today, wherever you are. And uh, I'm just here to like help you figure out how to get yourself where you're trying to go with your domain and all that jazz. But I am the official Grow with Google Digital Coach for Ohio. And it's always Grow with Google in case someone's like, what does that mean? The Grow with Google, Google team, that's like a department within Google. And our entire team's job is to help small business owners to adopt and like utilize technology for their businesses. Essentially, we are put in place to help you like help level the playing field from big business to small business so that more small business owners get served with like real information and so that you guys are actually getting everything that you need in order to make your business grow which is part of the reason why this type of workshop is really important because it's going to be talking about some topics that are actually quite key for you and your business. So that's enough about us and enough about me. Let's talk about domain, okay? So this workshop is all about domain and very fortunately, um, Omateo, I'm, y'all, I'm pretty good at pronouncing names just based on reading them, but that's because I'm a professor. So <laughs> Omateo, says that they are getting started. Oh no, it was India who said that she's getting started with her business. And so India, you and a bunch of people in here are getting started. So we've got Kimberly who's getting started, uh, mobile golfing, uh, lots of people who are getting started with, with their business. This is a perfect getting started workshop because we're gonna talk about a lot of the stuff that has to happen when you're getting started. The very first thing, it's not literally, but if you're in the internet, one of the first things that you need to do is get some sort of website. Now, this is hard because one of the challenges is that creating websites and doing a lot of this stuff is prohibitive, right? It is, it's either expensive or um, the technology is really hard or it's both technology is hard and it's expensive. <laughs> it's a lot of things. But the challenge is that we all live in a very scam heavy society right now. Like it's not that it's truly any different than it was before. I really don't believe in like, oh, this is the worst it's ever been. Scams have always been real. It's just that we couldn't like people couldn't scam you from six countries away. Like they couldn't scam you from a whole other continent, uh, <laughs> like from you, like you're in your kitchen and they're in some other country. Like it, it wasn't nearly as easy to do that. And now it's to the point where most of us as consumers are very, very careful. We're very careful. And we're careful because we don't want to, we personally don't want to get scammed. Now, this works against us as small business owners. So if you're a small business owner, yes, I mean, come on, M. M. Taylor put in that people are getting scammed when doing simple stuff like opening an Etsy shop. And it's 
very simple. Like simple things like that can actually be a big issue because you're getting scammed and you're not knowing how and why and all that. So anyway, the reason I bring up all the scams is not because of the scams themselves, but because one of the easiest things that we as business owners can do to make our businesses more credible is to have a good URL because a lot of scammers will use really bad URLs. Their, their website address will be something really weird or off or you know, all those types of things. And the last thing that you want is for people to think that your business isn't real because you have, you know, a Google site or some, not even a Google site, but like, you know, some Yahoo site or something that is just not as professional. It's not as polished as having your own URL, your own domain that you own. The domain gives you a ton of credibility. So we're going to talk about that, but we're also going to talk about how it applies when it comes to doing things like sending emails and setting yourself up for other services. So when you are going to open a bank account, a lot of times they want an information, they want information on your business. They want, I was actually opening up a uh, business bank account myself with Capital One Online, the Capital One 360 or Capital One Direct. And they were like, we need to verify your email address. We need to verify all of these bits of information. And I was using my business email because I am a business owner. And that is the appropriate thing to do is to use an email address that is associated with your business. And so what we want to do is both have that really great domain, that www.yourbusiness.com. But we also want you to have your Michael at yourbusiness.com for your email address. We want you to have Thomas at yourbusiness.com for your email address. Instead of having it be, again, Thomas Aaron's at Gmail, and someone could potentially think, well, that's not a real business. I don't feel like comfortable transacting and giving someone money if I am not getting that kind of, you know, security or, you know, feeling safe. Yes, Michael, I do know what that is. I, I want to say, of course, but it's a little bit beyond our workshop. We might, we might get to it. We might get to it. So what is a domain? We're basically going to stay at the level of like domain, email, and like how to make the connection between the two. Now, Michael asked in the chat about this thing called DMARC. And essentially what Google and a lot of other email providers are doing in order to make us less susceptible to spam is they are asking us as business owners, if you want your emails to end up in people's inboxes when you email from your professional email address, then you need to go through a certain level of verification with that email. It is, there's a couple of uh, articles on Google's website about how to do it. And it's again, it's free. If someone's trying to charge you money to do this process of getting your email address, uh, you know, verified and all that, you don't, it's not, it shouldn't cost you anything. It's free. Uh, after you have the email address, you've already paid for your own domain. Just getting your DMARC is not complicated. It's a little complicated, but it's not expensive. It shouldn't cost you anything. So, okay. We're going to talk about how to, again, get that first little setup started. So what is a domain? Again, the domain is, you want to think of it like the address that someone would pull up to at an old school business. So old school being like, you know, a brick and mortar shop that you would hang a shingle out in front of. Back in the old days, before we had internet, that was basically how anybody found anybody was through either the phone book or your, you know, that shingle that you hit outside the door. Now, what we have the ability to do now is essentially create that shingle in the internet where you hang up a sign and anyone in the internet can find you at the address that you hung up in the internet. Most URLs are actually quite simple. So the www dot, and then it's the name of whatever. And then the domain name itself is the part that comes after the www and after the at symbol. So for myself personally, I have several different businesses. Um, for me, my, my domain or my URL is www.prmresults.com. And if you go to that email, that I'm actually kind of shutting that business down. So if you went to that website, you wouldn't really see anything. But the email that I have is Lindsay at PRM results. So now those two things are together. And then the website is the place that is located at those addresses. So think of your website as the building in the old school when you have a building and you hang out that shingle, the shingle being the sign in the front. 
right underneath the sign is the building and that is exactly it. So it's your address, your shingle and your sign and your building itself. That is the equivalent of like the domain, the website and the URL. They are not the same, but they all go, they all essentially point to the same place. They all point to the same place. Why do you need a domain? You, de you need a domain because people are looking for you. They're looking for whatever it is you offer. And when you don't have a domain, it makes it very difficult for them to find you. Now, I someone already mentioned an Etsy business, which is fantastic because we can use Etsy as an example of what it means to have a search that someone is doing. So I am going to type in, let me see something that you guys do. Oh, I love Tim does live plants. Fabric art. Okay, so fabric, I'm going to go with Amy Brockman. Amy has a fabric art business and she is launching a fabric uh, a, bra, a blog. So she's got, she's a writer too. Okay, and Amy, I might use you for a couple of examples. So if we wanted to find handmade or hand-designed fabric, I'm going to type that in, hand uh, painted, matter of fact, fabric. If I type in hand painted fabric into the just basic Google, I did absolutely nothing but type in hand painted fabric. I don't know Amy from Adam. I just read her name and saw what she does and I just typed it into the Google search. Now, when I type that in, I get a bunch of different websites. I have Mood Fabrics, Ballard Designs, um, Spoon Flower, which is a design site, um, Etoffe, uh, Paragold, those are all websites. So the domains themselves are coming up, but those are all websites. And so if I, and, and one of the big ones that keeps coming up here is Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. So Amazon's coming up in a lot of different places. Why did I do that right then? Because when someone searches, what happens is they get a bunch of different web addresses, a bunch of options show up and they show up like this. They show up visually, they show up in a text, they show up all these different ways. And before anyone clicks on any of these, what's the first thing that we see? And we see Etsy there too. This spoon flower, Etsy, Amazon, Mood Fabrics, Ballard Designs, Paragold, and Etouffee is the name of the website. So immediately Google is signaling to us, the consumer, Google is saying these businesses are named this thing and this is the website that you're going to go to is amazon.com, uh, paragold.com, etouffee.com, spoonflower or etsy.com. It's letting me know immediately that that's where I would end up if I click on one of these links. Why is this good? Why is this good for you all, for Amy and any of you who have a business? Because even if I don't click on Spoonflower, if I never clicked on Spoonflower, guess what? I now know that Spoonflower is a website that has hand-painted fabric by the yard. Look at that. It's got 100% cotton by the yard, cloud sky, hand-painted watercolor, custom fabric. That's what it means by brand building. So even if someone doesn't ever go to your website from seeing it in the internet, they will now know that your business exists. And what Monica is saying there, I want to make sure that we all catch this too. This is Amazon. You're seeing Ballard Designs. You're seeing Etouffee. You're seeing Etsy. Those are all websites that you've heard of before. But have you ever heard of Spoonflower? Maybe not. I know I have never heard of Spoonflower. I've never heard of etouffee.com. I've never heard of either of those places. And so now, along with Etsy and Amazon and Ballard Designs, which I have heard of, I am now seeing Paragold and Etouffee and Spoonflower, which are three different organizations that I'd never heard of before, which is great for brand building. So if you have your own website and you have your own URL, then it makes it a lot easier for you to become the organization that people see right alongside the people who are doing the thing that you are doing for a living, right? So it adds to that, at that search capacity, the brand building, professionalism, clearly, but then access to tools. So all the stuff that I was talking about earlier about making sure that your emails don't end up in someone's spam filter, 
You can't do that with your basic Gmail address. You can't do it with your basic AOL email address. You actually have to have a professional domain in order to send emails from, actually, in order to send emails using MailChimp or ConvertKit or Constant Contact. So any of the software, Wix, any of the software that you would want to send email to your audience from, they're all going to require essentially that you have a domain that you own, that you can't use just a standard Gmail address. And so with that, having your own domain is really, really useful. All of those tools, every single one of them. So what is the goal? The goal for a, a domain is not to try to spell everything out and have it be as explicit as humanly possible <laughs> what the title of your business is. It's to be as clear as possible. Good, not perfect. So in the chat, I want you guys to tell me if you were to get a website today, if you don't already have one, if you have one, you can just ignore this. But if you don't have one, what URL would you use? What URL, what's the domain you would want? What's the name that you would want on your website? www.what? I want you to tell me in the chat, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can look at the what you said. So we got D. Conrad, D. Conradi Design, okay, D. Conradi Design, Success Plug, Pink Glam, keep them coming. The reason why I want to talk about that is because it's not always, if someone put in McDonald's.com, you cute. Uh, so <laughs> it's not always obvious what your domain should be. And that's the reason why I asked the question <laughs> and you guys came, you came, you came for me. I appreciate that. Uh, but what I want to know is like, what are you thinking of? Because sometimes the domain that you look for isn't available. And if it's not available, then you have to figure out what to do if it's not available. And that's part of the reason why you start brainstorming. I will warn everyone. There are very few domain providing software that are private. So when I say private, I mean, if you go to GoDaddy or Namecheap or any of those types of places and you search for one of these domains, if you don't buy it that day, you are very likely going to come back later and it's going to be gone because people are out there kind of what's called domain poaching, like they're looking for searches on certain domains. And when that domain gets searched, they buy it so that later when someone comes back to buy that domain, they will sell it to them, but it won't be at the same price. It'll be higher. So I always encourage people to think about what you want your domain to be, do some research, but don't like go and go into GoDaddy and see if it's available until you're ready to buy it. So don't do that yet. I don't want you going into GoDaddy or any of those other software to look it up yet. So for those of you, a few of you said you're not sure yet, you're trying to figure out, oh, good, Canine Coach is not available. James, I'm going to use you as an example. That's a perfect, this is exactly why I asked you guys to tell me, is that I want to know what you're interested in so that we can talk about why or how we can go and get something else. And potentially how we can avoid the pitfalls of finding a domain that maybe has more than one meaning because there's some times where I think it was the uh, the first one that I read where my brain, I'm dyslexic. I honestly am. That's not, a, that, I'm not just saying that. I, I'm dyslexic. And so sometimes the letters switched themselves up on me. And when I read D Conrad, I actually read D Conrad by design which I was like, oh, Denise, that is good. D. Conrad by design. Uh, and so I don't know if that's what she was trying to type or not, but that's what my brain saw. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that whatever the thing is that you're trying to type in or that you want to do as a URL is actually like readable and that people can understand it. So you Google did used to have a domain service called Google Domains, but they actually sold it off to Squarespace. And I personally love Squarespace domain. So I am going to show you guys the Squarespace domains section because it's actually pretty cool. So right now they have, if you go to Squarespace website and you go to find a domain and I'll just pop this link in here for everybody. It's, I'm going to pop it into the chat. And if my lovely score host could share that with everybody, because I don't have exact, um, 
uh, I don't have access to post to you guys for some reason, but I can post to uh, Dan and Dan can share with you guys. So if you don't find it available, so let, let me, Monica, you're asking the question. I'm going to use, who did I say? Canine coach. So James's business, canine coach. So if we come to this, you know, squarespace.com or the domains.squarespace.com and I type in caninecoach.com, what it's going to do is give me the fact that canine coach is unavailable. That doesn't mean that I'm done with potentially being the canine coach. You can still be James Werner canine coach. There are a few ways that you can do it that will keep the meaning without changing it too much. And one of the things I love about doing a domain search with something like Squarespace is that they're going to give you examples. So like natural canine coach or canine coach NYC. So now James can start thinking. If he is, let's say he's the canine coach for Detroit, then he might say, I don't know, I didn't see where can, where James is from. So he might say canine coach Detroit or Detroit canine coach could be the name of his business. Now, why that? Why would he do that for his domain? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Because now whenever anyone hears the name of his website, they are going to associate him with the location that he's in. That's huge. Especially because I'm assuming that James is a canine coach for like dogs in person and not just all the dogs in the internet. And if he was a canine coach for all of the dogs in the internet, if that was what he was attempting to do, then whoo, you are good to go with like trying to find a big, you know, a big option like canine coach USA or something like that. Now, John has put in here, one of the downsides to Squarespace and Wix is that the domain isn't yours, you're winching space. So let's clarify, John, you're always renting a domain, no matter who you get it from. You're never buying it. You're always renting it. What happens with uh, Squarespace back in the old days, back in the old days, Squarespace doesn't do this anymore. Um, Wix still does. So I'm a Wix person. I have all the websites that I have are on Wix. I build Wix uh, websites for clients. Not you, not like for real, but um, the downside. So Monica, he said the downside is that sometimes the um, the website provider owns your domain and that you are then renting it from them. So what he really means is that sometimes if you buy a domain from someone who is a website provider, like Squarespace is a website provider, you can buy the domain and you can build your website on Squarespace together. With Wix, you can buy your domain and build your website on Wix together. The problem with, I'll use Wix because Wix is notorious from that. Oh, John, this is next level. John's talking next level stuff. Let's let's say, John, 99.9% .9 of humans just rent their domain. There's very little value in doing a domain purchase, meaning that you become, essentially, you have to become like a registered domain provider. And so you don't you don't really buy them. So with here, don't Squarespace or GoDaddy or Namecheap or any of these types of locations, everyone's renting. You buy it or you rent it for a year. With Wix, and the reason why people get really like discombobulated with Wix is that what Wix will do is that they will give you a domain for free when you buy your website from them, when you build your website with them. And often what that means, though, is that when you don't want to be on Wix anymore and you want to move your website to GoDaddy or you want to move your website to um WordPress or if you want to move your website to Shopify, and Shopify does the same thing, by the way. All of these places reserve the right to essentially not let you take your web, your domain with you. Like you can't take it. It's your, it's theirs essentially. And that you have to either transfer it out or buy a whole new one. And you might end up not having that same domain. So yes, the, the thing that John is talking about does happen, but it's usually if you get a domain and a website at the same time from a place that only does the website combo thing. I don't suggest you do that. And Squarespace doesn't do that. So let me tell you why. Let me, how do I know Squarespace doesn't do that? Because I have webs. I have I have literally have my domains with web with a uh, Squarespace, and I can just show you. I'm y'all. I'm a huge fan of Show and Tell. I do not believe in saying anything that I cannot back up. So <laughs> so for me, this is me. This is my literal account. This is my face. You see my name there. 
here are the domains that I have purchased or transferred into Squarespace. I do not have a single website with Squarespace, not one. Nothing I have is a Squarespace website. All of these are just domains that I have that are either on other websites that I have built on Wix or they are waiting for me to build a website on Wix <laughs> and I will just apply the domain to Wix instead of buying my domain through Wix because like I said, Wix can be a little evil and make it hard for you to get your domain off of their site. And I don't like that. So instead I'm just buying my domain separately. And yes, I have applied, easily applied these, these domains to any website provider I want. So it is not, it's not a captured thing. I'm not like, I'm not beholden to anybody. <laughs> I'm like, but anyway, let's get back to Canine Coach. So I typed in Canine Coach. I'm glad that you brought that up, John, because I know people really like, really get stuck sometimes with like having their, wanting their website to be easy. And so they buy their domain and their website at the same time. And I would suggest you buy your domain separately and use a domain provider, like again, Namecheap. We're giving you examples here so that you can use real stuff. When you go in and you type Canine Coach and you have all these different examples of like Canine Coach Live, Canine Coach, like I said, it could be Detroit. You give a bunch of different options. Any number of these are a good idea. Now, let me give you my one really big tip for figuring out what kind of variation you should go with. So we got canine. We also have, I'm just going to put it up here, even though I know it's going to be taken. We have the the letter and the number canine, right? So K9 coach, but K-9 dash coach. There we go. K9 coach app. There's all sorts of options here for K, the letter K and the number nine. So there's also that if you're thinking about what variations you can do, something that's very simple like this one might be an option. But what I would always suggest you do before you choose any is the main one that you want. So K9Coach.com. I always go to it to see what's here. And beautifully, the website that is here is not a secure site, which means it's either not really a website or it's a really bad website. Like it's not not like dirty, not, not, not like pornographic. Unfortunately, I'm not on safe search. So if it was pornographic, it would just show up. Um, <laughs> I, should, I should probably make sure I do that for my workshops, right? So I don't end up going somewhere dirty on the internet with you guys with me. Uh, so, But this just didn't show up at all, which means it's probably just not an active website or it doesn't have a security certificate attached to it. Either way, I'm not going to click this little button to say continue to site because I don't know these people. I'm not going to their website like that. But this is actually really good for our friend who is interested in the k9.com URL. So James, who is interested in this URL, now he knows that the competition for the words k9 coach is basically non-existent because when I go to the word k9coach.com, the website doesn't even show up. And the reason why we're looking is because if he was to do k9-coach, we would just want to make sure that if someone accidentally forgot the dash, that they wouldn't end up at your direct competition's website, period. That's like the biggest issue I want you to avoid. Whatever you're interested in, whatever type of Reiki flow, um, J. Leonard company, whatever it is you're interested in, when you go to buy the domain, if J. Leonard company is not available, go to jleonardcompany.com to see who has that website. Because if that website is like, if you are a consulting firm for teachers who are transitioning to becoming professionals and the other Jay Leonard does the exact same thing, then you do not want to use that URL. You want to find another one altogether. Now, how do we think about finding another one? A bunch of you put in like names like Christiana or Christina Vallum Jewelry. Christina Vallum is, pro that's probably available. It is very likely available. It's Christina Vallum Jewelry. Uh, but someone like Hill, Hoofprint Hill Horsemanship. What if that's not available? 
then you might want to look into doing a domain that is a bit more descriptive. So are you a horse training? What does horsemanship mean? And then you might use the descriptive term instead of using the term horseman. Does that make sense to everybody? So instead of saying like I kind of switched up K9 to the letter K and nine, you can always kind of come back and try to ex try to kind of experiment a little bit and figure out what are some different ways that you can say the thing or different words that you can use so that it's not exactly what it what the thing that's not available, but it's close enough to where you can actually like see it and hear it. So I've been I got a lot of questions about WordPress. There's a few of you who are talking about WordPress. I will say I'm not a huge fan of WordPress for small businesses because it gets very complicated very quickly. And most of y'all ain't got time for that. And so if you want something easy, Squarespace is actually really great. Like I said, I have my websites are all on Wix. I just don't use Wix for a domain. If you hear anything, don't buy your domain with Wix. Both me and uh, John are telling you don't do that. Uh, so, uh, Weebly, Judy, I'm not a huge fan of Weebly either, but that's because Weebly doesn't really grow with you. So Wix will grow with you. Wix, you can build an enormously beautiful website on Wix. There are plenty of very large businesses that run their websites on Wix, but with Weebly, you're going to hit a wall with Weebly at some point where you won't be able to get any bigger or grow faster or whatever because the, the website just doesn't grow with you versus some of these other ones. Wix, and it is W-I-X, and W-I-X is Wix. Okay, so considerations, keep it short. Uh, use keywords and brand names. So like I said with Christina, Christina Vallum, that's beautiful. It's your name. It's like perfect. So Christina Vallum, um, in using some, that's your brand, that's your name. Uh, canine, Co canine Coach is great. It's just that it wasn't available. So how do we use some other keyword? Like how do we keep the concept of Canine Coach, but use other keywords? And then also there is absolutely nothing wrong with alternate endings. So if you go, we go to my own domains that I have, you'll see that I have a domain in here that is cmpro.me. And why? Because what I've done there is actually created a short code for Certified Marketing Pro, which is my new brand. And I didn't want people to have to type out Certified Marketing Pro because you can see how long that is. It's very long. And so I actually have CM Pro as a shortened version, but cmpro.co and cmpro.com were both taken. And so instead, I just use cmpro.me because it's me, I'm a professional, and I'm, and I'm only going to be using it for a short URL so that people who are in the internet won't have to type out certifiedmarketingpro.com. So you can go a whole bunch of ways with this stuff. You don't have to keep it literal, okay? It doesn't have to be fully literal. Now, this is being recorded, and it's also available on YouTube. So if you're watching this right now, and if you're going to copy the slides, all of it's available on YouTube, and it's going to be available because um, you I'm, half of the stuff isn't even in the slides that I'm talking about. So uh, make sure that you are watching it on YouTube. It'll be available pretty much immediately afterwards, okay? So yeah, keep it simple. Please try to not exceed three words. Three words is really the magic once you get to that fourth word, people don't remember it anymore. So uh, Christina Vallum Jewelry, perfect, three words. But you wouldn't want to have it to be Christina Vallum Original Jewelry or Christina Vallum Silver Jewelry or Gold Jewelry. Like it's too much. At that point, you are you added the word gold and it doesn't make it any easier, better, or like it doesn't make it easier to remember. It doesn't make it shorter. It doesn't make it more valuable. It just makes it longer and harder to remember. So try to rem try to keep it so short that anybody who you tell it to will be able to understand exactly the words that you're saying and that they will be able to like repeat it back to you easily. And some of the ones that you guys are putting in here are uh, long enough to where I'm like, well, I'm not sure people would be able to remember and understand that one. Oh, and Susan, Susan has a really good, a really good example of when your name, the lovely, absolutely fantastic, is going to potentially create a problem for people. Now, Susan is thinking that I'm talking about her last name, which is Inwoki. So or I'm I'm switching it because I'm I'm dyslexic. It's in Wok D. And so <laughs> so in Wok D. 
I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about the fact that Susan's last, her first name and her last name start and end with the same letter. So it's Susan, S-U-S-A-N, and then her last name starts with an N. And people are notoriously bad at double letters when they don't go in the middle of a word. <laughs> so we might have a problem there, not because it's a bad, it's a great domain. Absolutely fantastic. You should still buy it. Girl, it's only $12. You rent it. Um, but people will spell your name wrong constantly. They'll drop an N and they'll it'll just they'll just say S U S A N W O K, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's already active. I'm like, girl, keep it, keep it, keep it. But then you might want to buy, buy another one that is shorter or that doesn't have the two ends that touch. Only because, as I always say, people are stupid. Uh, and by people, I don't mean other people. I mean me and uh, y'all too. Like we, <laughs> we are collectively dumb. And if you give us something challenging, like two ends next to each other, we will immediately, our brain will want to eliminate one of those ends. And we just don't want people going to the wrong website. Now, <laughs> I have, for everyone here, I have intentionally bought URLs with misspelled words because I used to have a another business where my URL, I can't remember what the exact words were in the URL, but it was a commonly misspelled word. And so I actually bought both versions. I bought the version with it spelled correctly and I bought the version with it spelled incorrectly because I didn't want people to not come to my website. I'm like, so, yeah, yes, Ann can, and Ann knows what I'm talking about. She's got like six E's, and what is that? Four, three, how many N's is in Ann's name? Like, there's so many, y'all, there's so many N's. So you guys get the idea. Use branded keywords, use brand names. There's five N's in her name. Uh, use keywords, words that people will understand. And super big hint, if you can, because we just saw someone do it very well. If you can include a location in your title, if you are a location-based business, it's even better. It's a thousand times better. So if you have a business where you're located in a specific geographic area and you only service that area, there is absolutely no reason not to get a URL that is just about that area. Um, I've actually seen businesses do that with brands where you have all over the United States, but each of the locations has their own website. And so then every website's determined, like they have a the name, the main name of the business dash location. And then that way everyone knows if they want to find the one that's in uh, St. Louis, it's dash STL or the one that's in Detroit, it's dash DET. So keeping it simple because especially for cities like us, CLE, there's lots of businesses that add a CLE at the end of their title because that's the commonly known way to abbreviate Cleveland for Clevelanders. It's not great for people who are outside of Cleveland or St. Louis or any of the other places where you're like, what does DET stand for? Well, it's not for you. That's the reason why you don't know. <laughs> it's for people in Detroit. They know what DET is. And so do St. Louisans know what STL. We, Those of us who are local to an area, we know what that area's little three letters are that everyone calls it. So if you want to use that for your domain, feel free. It just, it, it'll be available. Absolutely, it'll be available. Okay, so gobeyond.com, like I mentioned, you don't have to use .com. You got .zone, you got .academy, you got .me. There's lots of options. .net, I'm not a huge fan of .net. That's just me though. I'm silly. I'm a silly emotional problem girl. And so that's, that's the only reason why I will say I don't love it. But that again, that's not that's a that's a me problem. That's not a you problem. If you want a .net, you go .net all day long, and it's not a problem at all. It is just as legitimate as .com or .co or .me or .academy or .law or any of the other ones that are available and relevant to your business. Oh, I didn't give you guys my other massive cheat code for domains. So oh, I keep going to the same spot. So if you want to get a domain and you are, let's, I know there was at least one person who had a, an internet service provider type business that they were thinking about creating. So I'm going to, I'm going to pretend um, that it was Monica, Monica Wren. So I'm just going to go with, I'm going to shorten it because I'm cute. Moni Wren dot IT. So if you have, there we go, 20 bucks a year. If you have a domain that makes sense for some of the fun 
uh, at, at suffixes like dot it or um, there's there's just a bunch of them dot live dot me where you can actually use it because your business is an IT business or your business is a uh, a business where the thing about your business is kind of represented with the dot. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. So dot live is a really great one dot space dot family. So if you have a business where you may be a pediatrician um, dot press, I know I saw at least one company that where somebody was going to start a blog uh, and dot guru dot fitness dot style. There was one stylist in here already. So these are really great. Oh my goodness, Moni, if girl, if you were a stylist, you should take that Moni, Moni Rand style. style. That is some, that's some good stuff right there. So <laughs> like, whatever it is, you don't have to stick with .com. You can move well past .com. <laughs> you don't have to. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they're expensive. Which, Judy, if it's $99 a year, believe me, that is $99 a year. That's not $99 once. That's $99 a year. Find a different domain. I'm not about that life. I'm like, if it's more than $20, why am I doing this? <laughs> so if you have a business where your brand name is exactly the domain and you want it and you know that you are really interested in buying it, I, I literally just had this conversation earlier today with a business owner and he's actually buying his via GoDaddy because the domain that he wanted was unavailable. And so he had its uh, sale brokered through GoDaddy. Now, again, you don't own the domain. You're just renting it. But you can take your essentially ownership via GoDaddy from another person who owns it. So he bought it from a business, that person who buys domains and waits for someone to want it and then sells it to them. And he actually paid $2,100, which is the reason why I mentioned this right now, because Judy is like, $9.95? Uh, sometimes the domains are expensive. I am not telling you, you should do that. <laughs> do not, do not do that. Um, but it is totally legitimate. Just make sure you're going through a website that's a broker like GoDaddy. Don't just go on the internet and have somebody tell you, oh yeah, I own that. And then you wire them $2,100 because you just got scammed. They don't own anything. And so <laughs> I will say, always use a broker, always use a broker. So We'll talk a little bit about websites. I, I Y'all, when you first get going, when you first get started, it's almost more important that you have a website than that you have the best website ever. One of the good things about Google Sites is, first of all, it's free, uh, but there's no hosting fees. You would only pay for your domain if you were using Google Domains. If you're using Squarespace or any of the other domains, you're paying that domain provider for access to that domain. You can have the same abilities to edit that anybody else would have uh, on a standard website. It's actually really easy, like drag and drop. You do not need any programming skills whatsoever. It's amazing. So it's great, really good if you want to DIY and you just click on Google Sites. I'm going to go to it right now so that you guys can see it. So sites.google.com. Left off my m.com. And did I leave it off again? There we go. Sites.google.com. And when you go to Google Sites, back in the old days, a Google site would not have been pretty. <laughs> it would have been not very good at all. But nowadays, y'all, this is a Google site for a salon. We have beautiful hair styling, nail treatments, makeup services. This is a standard template inside of Google Sites now. It has services pages and about us page, testimonials, contact us form. You can officially now have a Google site that has your own domain attached to it. And on top of that, that looks good with multiple pages. It's really just, it's amazing, okay? So what I want to make sure that you're, you're knowing here, because a lot of people get very they remember google sites from the old days and google sites really did used to be trash like i'm <laughs> i might be a google coach but i am not a liar and so <laughs> it used to be trash and so this is much 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 better uh it's a great product you can create something significantly more robust than a landing page and it's not that landing pages are bad landing pages are great but this is the ability to create so much more than that including the fact that you have the ability to have a mobile version of your website that you can edit 
Um, it's mobile responsive automatically. So I just clicked on a few buttons there so that I can show you guys what it looks like. It shows us what it looks like on a tablet and it also shows us what it looks like on a computer screen. So just because you, you know, you maybe don't have a budget for someone to design your website for you, you don't have a budget for, you know, hosting fees and things like that. I, I'm with you. I don't want y'all to spend money you don't need to spend ver very early in your business. When you go to publish it, you will have a Google Sites name that is associated with whatever your URL is and all that good stuff. And once you hit publish, you can, actually, I think you can do it before. Uh, you can add a domain. It's gonna, it's gonna make my life hard trying to figure out how to do it right now. But you can actually add your own domain to this website. It might not let me do this one because this one was created forever ago. But um, but you you can add an actual domain to your website for all of that. And yes, it's a free tool. It's completely free. So really easy. You go to Google sites.google, like I said, sites.google.com. And once you're in sites.google.com, the first thing you'll see is the template area. And inside of the template area, there are tons and tons. I don't know why I didn't go back to home. Uh, I also, and there's lots and lots of different templates. It's actually a template gallery so that you can go in here and see what kind of a, what kind of, um, a landing page you might want to create. They have ones for restaurants, uh, for photography business or portfolio. Um, they have professors who like people who want to create a website just so that people have a way to contact them. Um, several of you like just right here, Susan, um, if you have a dot com, that's your whole name. And it's really just a way for people to find out more information about you. You can create your page in Google sites. So there's lots of really great stuff in here. Um, you could, but like I said earlier, Google sold their domains to Squarespace. So now if you go to Google, if you go to domains, I'm going to go to it so you guys can see what I mean, because I bought, I'm a huge fan of Google domains, actually. So when I bought my domains via Google, um, after a few, I, I mean, it was like a year after I bought the last domain. So I have a ton of domains. I'm I'm a, I don't, I don't, I practice what I preach. I'm a little bit of a domain buying crazy person. I'll buy it. As soon as I have an idea for a business, I'll just buy the domain <laughs> to make sure I have it. And then if I don't need it, I'll let it expire. Um, because it's just, I mean, it's $12 or whatever the amount is. And if the idea is in my head, I want to make sure that I have the ability to hold on to it. So nowadays you can get the same service that you would get for Google domains, the old version of reality. You can get that from get a domain on the Squarespace site. Or because I don't care about where you do this, there is, yep, Namecheap. I'm like, I, there's a site called Namecheap.com. And with Namecheap, you can also buy a domain. Um, you can do it from GoDaddy and things like that. You know, like you don't have to buy it via Squarespace. And um, look, I don't need you, Rayeda diagnosing me. I mean, of course, I clearly sound like I have ADHD, uh, but it really is that I just enjoy chatting with you guys about all of these things. It might make me sound a little crazy. Uh, yes, Tasha, you can add eBooks and things like that to your Google site. Uh, and it's really simple. It's not complicated at all. Like you, you say you want someone to be able to upload or download something and you can put a button on and on behind that button is the link to either a Google file, because it's going to be via Google, um, or if you have it like as a PDF, that PDF file. So it makes it makes it actually pretty easy. Okay, good. You guys are giving me all sorts of great feedback. I love it. So Anne asks if you have an e-commerce site. I personally, for e-commerce, still use Wix. I love Wix. Wix has a great e-commerce platform. So don't let anybody tell you that Wix is bad. I'm, I, I've already said the name 17 times. So I'm just going to go to Wix real quick. Like I said, do not buy your domain from Wix. Don't do it. Do not do that. <laughs> but if you want a website, Wix is fantastic. It's a great, very easy, like this beautiful website here. You could build something that looks this good as long as you have the beautiful picture within an hour. It is very easy to use. And as you can see here, they do e-commerce. And so even if you want to do something like you think you want to have a Shopify site or anything like that, Shopify is nice, but Shopify can get very expensive. And I love Shopify, love it. 
but it can get very expensive. Wix is basically three price tiers and it's the same no matter what. Like matter of fact, I often pay for my domains or my websites with Wix for the whole year because it's like $218. And so there's no reason for you not to. So again, once you publish your website and you make it available for people to see, if we're using Google Sites, remember, I'm talking about how easy Google Sites is. When you're doing Google Sites, you can add a domain, you can manage your domain, you can manage how it, it shows up to companies, or you could just use the standard Google Site URL that you already get. The goal of your website or for you, for everyone here, when you very first get started, um, move... No. So I have Denise asking, is it easy to move from uh, Google to Wix? It's not easy to move a website, period. For the most part, you're never moving a website. You're just creating the new page. When I say website, I mean the page. So let me go to Spoonflower so that you guys see what I mean. So Spoonflower, this is this beautiful thing here is their website. This is the site itself all the information in it. Up here at the top, this little domain here, www.spoonflower.com, that's their domain. If you buy your domain with Squarespace, you can buy your domain through Namecheap, you can buy your domain through GoDaddy, you can buy your domain just about anywhere. Don't buy it with Wix, that's what I'm saying. But when you buy it with one of those companies, you will need to apply it to a website. Google Sites is a great place because it's free. It's just sitting there waiting for you to build a site and apply your domain to it. But also you can build a site using Squarespace because they have a website builder. So they have one built in. If you want to buy both your domain and your website at the same spot, you can with Squarespace. Or if you want to do with Wix, you can do it with Wix. But as Michael said, you are not buying your domain. You're just renting it. Thank you, Michael. You're paying attention. Uh, I was just using that as a shortcut language because <laughs> you're not buying anything. You're just renting it. So if you need help with Google Sites, there is support for it. But for the most part, it really is like building a really pretty slideshow. It's not hard at all. You just drag and drop, put your pictures in, and it, you can be up and running in a weekend. So with that, I know like we have ton, given you guys a ton of information. What I want everyone to do before I let you guys go, I want you to tell, thank you, Joy, weekend goals. What I want everyone to tell me is what are you going to do next? So this says activity, but I want to know what are you going to do next? While you tell me in the chat, I want you to know what, what are you going to do? Where, where, what, how are you going to do, apply this information? I want applied information. Um, what I meant by just renting Erica is that every year you have to renew your domain, meaning you have to pay again to keep access to that domain. If you stop paying, you lose access. So essentially you're renting it. You don't own it. It doesn't go with you anywhere. <laughs> you just rent it. And as long as you keep paying that rent, they will keep letting you use it to point people to your website. So that's why you are not buying a domain. You're renting it. Oh, Sarah. Sarah's going all advanced talking about Kajabi. Okay. <laughs> Y'all are, are going advanced. So once you do get your email or get your website set up is when you can actually start doing things like setting up emails and all that good stuff. This is all from when Google still did domains. So everything that you see here, if you bought a Google domain, uh, be when, before they sold it to Squarespace, you'll have access to all of this. But if you buy your domain via, say, Squarespace, or if you buy it from uh, GoDaddy or any of those software, and you want to use a Google Workspace account with it, then it's better to just go to, uh, I'm going to put in workspace.google.com. So it's better to go straight to Workspace and then connect that way because it can be a little complicated to connect your website, your domain to your email, but not prohibitive. Just be a little bit complicated. Okay. And we're done. This is it. It's an hour. It's exactly an hour. <laughs> you guys are like, when are we? What, what is, when is, when is she done? This is it. I'm done. I know Dana's like, girl, it's only an hour. Um, The name, the slide name. What was the link? Uh, word, workspace.google.com, workspace. Okay, y'all. 
you've learned a lot. I feel like you are, you, you understand the idea that you're renting your domain. <laughs> you're not buying it. Uh, and I love that. So he's like looking for all the misspellings. Occasionally you do have to look for a little bit of error uh, in some of the, the ways that you spell the domains or whatever. Um, .com versus .org. I would say if you are running a nonprofit organization, you might want to consider .org. Otherwise, no, uh, don't worry about it because it's just going to signal to people that your organization is either a school or a nonprofit, basically. You cannot buy a .edu just on the market, and that's good because people would be defrauding people left and right. Uh, so, so, yeah. So you're not paying a monthly fee you're only paying an annual fee for your domain. So if you're paying a monthly fee, you're likely paying for your um, your website. So your website hosting usually has a monthly fee. There you go. I think I, uh, and then Joy asked if you can direct people to multiple, um, the same website with multiple domains. And the answer is absolutely, which is the reason why I have cmpro.me it's going to go directly. It's going to direct people to certifiedmarketingpro.com. So they just will have, I'll have the ability to give them something short to type in, but it's going to take them to the longer named. It gets a little complicated, y'all, it, but it's it's not really, it's not that bad. Uh, and yes, actually, I think you can use Google sites for blogs. I would not recommend it. Zero recommendation there. Okay. <laughs> Zero recommendation. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to have to let you guys go. It is 8 o'clock p.m. Um, yeah. Oh, goodness. Someone asked about buying someone else's website. That is so precarious. I would just not do it. It's it's very difficult. You don't want to get scammed. And a lot of scams happen from people buying other people's domains. Y'all keep asking questions. <laughs> so, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate you and your time. Dan, are you there? I want to make sure everybody... Is there a wrap up for, yeah, there you are. Uh, Score, did you have any final words for everybody? Um, yeah. Hi, everybody. You will get um, a link to the YouTube uh, presentation, uh, the slides. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, check back uh, with Score from time to time. Lindsay does a lot of stuff with Score and uh, she's in great demand. And so you'll probably see her again on one of these presentations. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.